hello to everybody. Thank you very much for coming, and thank you to Swiss Corps for uh, and uh, to the Swiss Embassy for the um, occasion to present you the results, the first results of our COF Youth Labour Market Index. Um, I talked together with uh, the people from Swiss Corps what could be of interest for you. And, of course, I, um, a small introduction about the context, what we are doing, in addition to what Herr Steffen already explained you, why we are working, why I created myself this research division, because I was in, in my former function this general direction, director of a federal office. But I realized uh, in, in my work that um, all the time when I had the discussion with other countries, Switzerland quickly gets into the focus of vocational education training, and we were enthusiastic to help other countries, but uh, if it's getting concrete, uh, then we had a little bit more troubles to discuss how, to, how we can help to them. So that was for me one of the reasons why I stepped out of the federal administration and says I, I dedicate my work to research. I explain a little bit what we are doing in our um, division, and then, of course, the core of my uh, presentation is about how the Youth Labour Market Index is constructed, what is the rationale behind, and then some descriptive analysis so, so that you see how you can use that. I have to say it's also an uh, interactive web tool behind, so you can do your own comparison after that if you, don't, if you didn't do that um, already. And then I present a little bit the outlook, what we are doing now. It's the first release that we did last year. And, of course, this uh, index has a lot of issues, a lot of limitation from the research point of view. Uh, and that is maybe what we can discuss also. So the mission of the research to is basically, basically we would like to compare countries. We would like to analyze what is the impact of issues uh, in uh, globalization, as same as uh, aging societies, the rapid uh, evolution of technology. All those big trends, mega trends, do have an impact on education systems. Um, therefore, we, we basically work on the most effect, effective education system. We would like to find out what are the most effective education system and why and um, which tend to be in harmony with the demand of labor market. So basically, we are not doing a lot of study in the field of PISA, so in the, in the compulsory school level. We are not the specialist in uh, higher education ranking and this uh, kind of, uh, of uh, topics, but basically we are not, uh, uh, analyzing the linkage between employment and education system. So everything that has to do an education system with transition to the employment, that's uh, of our topic. Then, of course, um, if you are working with other countries, normally you are doing comparative analysis, and that is, in the most of our studies, is in the center. If you would like to know what are the most effective uh, education system, then, of course, you have to ask what are the functions uh, education system should fulfill. And... Uh, you can go into the legislation of uh, different countries. Maybe there you find some go functions and goals of education system. There is a German researcher. He basically um, evaluated three main functions which are important for every uh, country and every education system. And uh, monitoring of a system means we should analyze to what extent are those functions fulfilled. So the first is... Um, the individuals should be enabled to ind independently shape their own future uh, or biography, the relation to the environment and life in the community. Um, we are not so much engaged in this function, uh, but I think, especially if we are talking about economy for zero or industry for zero, uh, the big data issue and all these topics uh, where you we very don't know uh, where we end up in this uh, fourth part of the re technology revolution, there actually the, the, the discussion starts to... Um, the discussion begins to start with about uh, what, is, what is decentralization, what does it mean for uh, the individuum itself, how we can help to um, become more uh, a, a young person as a, an um, entrepreneur. So these kind of issues are coming up now in the field of education. 
But our topic is the second function. We would like to know to which, to which extent the abilities required on the labor market are made available. Um, that means securing the labor um, force qualitatively and quantitatively. And actually the most discussion or uh, the dialogues are on the quantitative aspects. Uh, youth unemployment is in the center. But what is also important, and I hope that you are convinced after uh, my presentation, that especially also the qualitative aspect is really important. So this is the human capital function uh, which every education system should fulfill. The third one is um, analyzing the extent to which social participation is ensured, including the aspect of social cohesion, equity issues, and so on. That's not what I go, want to go to talk about today. Now, um, when I was in my former function, I was basically also uh, one of the initiators of this OECD Learning for Jobs study, because we learned that OECD do a lot for PISA, for the compulsory school, as well as for higher education, uh, maybe also adult with uh, PIAC, um, all studies and so on, but not that much about vocational education training. Even if the, the analysis in the political field are, we, we have to care about this youth unemployment problem. And if you are looking at this um, uh, review, you will see that um, I think it's a very good study, OECD learning, and it had a very high impact, especially also on Switzerland, because we have not, so, not that much recommendation uh, to change the system, but we have a lot of other countries, a long list of recommendation, who are uh, trying to find help in Switzerland. But if we are analyzing now the study, we realize that the problem in the field of vocational education training is how to compare because there's a qu quite a mess of data. The data are not that comparable as we would like to have it or as compared to, for example, what we have in the field of, of the compulsory school uh, with the PISA study. So, and then if you are asking why is, why do we not have that good uh, quality of data? Of course, it has to do with the heterogeneity of VET systems. This is not uh, kind of, um, this is not kind of typical uh, upper secondary two level where you can say it's all over the same. It's totally different in the upper secondary two level. And even if you talk about vocational education training or apprenticeship, it doesn't mean the same from country to country. And that makes it very difficult to compare. And uh, I think the OECD realized that uh, here we have a big issue. So policy analysis are necessary uh, in order to get into the next step of um, results and of uh, policy solution that work. The second problem is the data, big data uh, gap or problems with the data. I already mentioned some of them. And then we have this kind of ISCAT classification, the ISCAT uh, data. I mean, everybody of you know, who is working in the education field knows we, this is helpful because quickly you can figure out how much people are on the um, ISCAT 1, 2, up to all the new ISCAT classification 6 or 8 level. But I have to say in the field of vocation education training, it's a total, total mess. Because some countries are educating people in the vocational education on level 3 or 4. And in the United States, a, a country which I know quite well, they educate people in vocational education training on level four, five or six, depending on uh, what classification you consider. So we are comparing classification levels which are totally different. And if policymakers make recommendation on those kind of data, that's not really what will, will help. So therefore, what we try to do is now we try to set up a research program in the center of our research program is uh, the link between education system and the labor market. And uh, this is a small graph to which try to explain what we are doing. First of all, we would like to have a kind of ranking or index where we can measure the, the benchmark in the uh, labor market, labor market outcome. This is our instrument, the use uh, labor market index, where we have countries which are above a benchmark and uh, below. 
On the other hand, and this is a much more tricky uh, program, we would like to create a typology of upper secondary to education level where we can figure out which of those education systems are much more oriented to a school approach and what are the countries which have a kind of labor market driven vocational education approach. And of course, the hypothesis behind is those countries who start uh, at the beginning of the upper secondary two with a very strong link between employment and education system will have better indicators. But we are not there yet now. Uh, those causalities we will, would like to find out. So actually I present you the Youth Labour Market Outcome Index with a different indi indicator. And the next step where, where we are working on is trying to make uh, regression analysis with other indicators if we have those typology. Some of our research projects in our division, so I will explain a part of this project, education systems and youth labor market. Uh, uh, youth labor market. There we have now the index, but the next step is this typology of education system, and then if we get uh, those better data, we do this uh, regression analysis in order to find out what are the causalities. Another problem, as I told you, we have, if we go, if we would like to improve ISCAT classification in the long run, we need to know what is the quality inside education. And in order to find out what is the quality inside the education, we need to compare curriculum, curriculum in the field of vocational education training. But as I explained to you, that's a very difficult topic because uh, you just, if you would like to compare, let's say, um, electricians or nurses, or clerks. The problem is some countries are educating those kind of occupations in the upper secondary level and the other one in the tertiary level. Now, what we have to find out is uh, what is comparable in the field of vocational education training if you are talking about curriculum. Because first of all, you need to know where are the curriculum which are maybe comparable. So I all the time mention the community colleges because those uh, community colleges are the education level in the states for vocational education training. High school is not really preparing people for uh, the labor market. I mean, I have a kind of approach inside high school, but it's never comparable to what we have in Switzerland, Germany, and other countries. So that's uh, about this uh, project. Then, of course, in all the countries, social status, the stigma on vocational education uh, training is a big issue, even in Switzerland. You maybe don't know that, and that we just had a discussion, uh, Mr. Bauer and I, uh, that the rhetoric in Switzerland and the fact, fact and figures are quite different. But we have to figure out why, are, uh, why is uh, the meaning, the mindset in the population, vocational education is, some, is something for uh, other people's children, but not for mine. So this mindset is all over the place, and therefore if we try to improve vocational roots for the future of the young generation, we have to work on the same time where are the problems in the mindset of, of uh, the people. Then, of course, besides this uh, dual causality between education level and the uh, labor market, there is, of course, a, a third aspect which could be important and explain different uh, uh, effects, the regulation on the labor market. So we have a doctoral student who is working on re uh, regulation and labor market outcomes if, if that has an impact and in which country. That could be also an explanation. Then we have some small projects, uh, especially with foreign countries. If uh, one country is uh, willing to do something to reform uh, their own system, then the, the first problem is how to engage companies. Because the big strength of vocational education training with a labor market uh, focus is that their uh, companies are very engaged in training. But we know from the political science literature there is a big discussion about the variety of capitalism, which means that, oh, we have to be careful. There are liberal markets and coordinated markets, and they have different features which explain a little bit why some countries have a much higher engagement of, uh, of companies than others do. 
for example, in the States, which is a typical liberal, mar uh, liberal market economy, they will have a big problem if they would like directly start project with a kind of dual track vocational education training because companies is, are not necessarily willing to train. Therefore, we recommend, first of all, to do a kind of survey to find out um, to what extent are companies willing to train and what the, are the incentives which are maybe important to consider if somebody is uh, preparing um, a reform. Then uh, with the uh, Swiss panel data, we are Swiss Economic Institute. We have a big uh, panel uh, with data from Swiss companies. And what we are uh, trying to find out is if the vertical education diversity, the mix of qualification from vocational routes up to university degree, if this mix, this educational mix has an impact on innovation performance. Because maybe you know that Switzerland is um, in Europe leader in innovation and uh, we would like to find out if there is a, is a um, correlation between the education diversity and its the innovation performance. Then uh, still Switzerland also has kind of uh, structural unemployment, so that's another Swiss project where we find out why, what, what are the uh, factors behind. And then we, in every country that we are working, we are preparing a country fact books with all the data, the findings that we get out of it with a standard structure. And the last uh, thing is we are also de dealing with um, Swiss curriculum. We are doing the evaluation of a professional education training college program, which is a national program in the business administration. Uh, those owners of the program would like to find out if uh, the students are employable at the end and at what time they should change the program. So we will publish that uh, this July. Now, the center is the Youth Labor Market Index. The general idea of this COF Youth Labor Market Index is that I already told it, most of the country are um, focusing on youth unemployment rate, but as you saw, the qualitative aspect is also very important. And of course, if we are talking about youth, we mean the age cohort of 15 to 24 old people, and hopefully a lot of them are still in education. It's not only about um, labor market uh, criteria, we have to figure out if what proportion is in the labor market and what are the others doing. Qualitative aspects such as, such as working condition uh, are seldom a topic in research, um, but it's becoming more and more important. So our thesis is that the single quantitative indicator uh, such as this use unemployment rate is not sufficient to, uh, ac to assess um, the situation of the young cohort uh, in one country. We need something more. So what you have inside the Youth Labor Market Index, you have data for up to 178 uh, countries. But I have to say, be careful. The best data set is for the European country because Eurostat did a lot of work in order to prepare data. E already for the OECD countries and other groups of countries, it's becoming much worse with the data. Uh, but um, it's the start with all the indicators that we have. The data source are not coming from our institute. Of course, we are working with the international organization such as ILO, OECD, Eurostat. So we are using data which are already prepared and which are comparable. Age cohort, I already mentioned that, 15 to 24 years old, with one exception in the indicator of skills mismatch. There we don't have the data set uh, in this cohort. It, this is uh, 15 to 29. Uh, then we will update this, ish, this index every year and improve it also. You will see some data are missing even for Switzerland. And uh, we first of all had to figure out why Switzerland doesn't deliver the data to the ILO. Then important is also what kind of indicators uh, can we choose in order to do so something like that such an, uh, an index. Three criteria are important. It must be outcome variables, first of all. They must be put in a clear ranking order. And of course, they must be available. 
So what we find out after comparing seven already existing kind of index indexes from OECD researchers, others, you, you can, by the way, you have all the data and the description in this uh, study, which you find also on our web. Uh, there you see how many indicators we, uh, how many index indexes we compared, how many indicators they use, and why we have, why we have chosen only 12 indicators. Those 12 indicators we put into four categories. And I just will explain you what kind of um, indicators we have. The four categories are activity state, working condition, education, and transition smoothness. So we think those four dimensions explain the situation of the young people in the age of 15 to 24 years. Now, why four dimensions and why 12 indicators? First of all, of all, the economically active use, the quantitative aspect you can divide in not employed, first of all, and employed. And the employed people, there we would like to know what are the working conditions. So the working conditions, of course, we, we know only from those who are employed. And there we have five indicators. If people are engaged in some kind of work, we, we, we would like to know, is, are they fully employed or are they working in a temporary worker under a tem limited temporary worker contract? And this means um, lower than 18 months. The reason is why we choose lower than 18 months is this is a short um, contract. And the shorter the contract is, the worse uh, for the young people. And if we have a longer, uh, we choice, uh, choose a longer um, duration, then we have all the apprenticeship inside because apprenticeship in Germany, Switzerland are considered as temporary worker contracts. So that's also the reason why we um, choose um, smaller than 18 months. Atypical working hours, working on Sunday shifts and uh, Saturday, involuntary part-time worker in work at risk of poverty rate, vulnerable em uh, employment rate. These are five indicators which explain a little bit the condition, how people are young people are working if they are employed. And on the other side, we have the not employed people. And here we make the distinction in unemployed and economically inactive. So the unemployed, there we have two indicators. The, the classically uh, unemployment indicator is people who are without work, but they are available and they are seeking work. So this is the definition of, of unemployment. Then we have the so-called unemployment rate, uh, including discouraged people. Uh, these are uh, people without work available but involuntarily inactive. They just try to, to find jobs, but didn't find jobs. Then we have the economically inactive people. These are uh, voluntary inactive, unable to work, other reasons, and therefore uh, the typical official uh, indicator is need, not, uh, neither employed nor in education and training. So this is basically what we know as indicators. They are outcome indicators, comparable, and uh, a lot of countries have those indicators. But of course, in the age of 15 to 24, we would like to know who is in education, still in education, and hopefully a lot of them are in education. That's why we are looking for the um, formal education and training rate, as well as skills mismatch. Because another aspect is, of course, if you have a lot of university area, you put everybody in the university, but they didn't find really a job, uh, an adequate job on the labor market, this is not a good um, thing for, young, for the young generation. The fourth dimension is transition. How long does it take from, employment, uh, from education to employment? Uh, here we have two indicators. The relative unemployment rate measures uh, the, the employment rate between the youngsters and the adults, and the long-term unemployment rate means more than one year unemployed. So in the slides, you find the definition. I don't go into the detail because I think that's uh, not so important, actually, but uh, the description you have here and in the 
in the draft, in the report, you find also how we calculated that. What are exactly, what is the, um, the method to calculate it, why we did it like that, because all the time in every indicator we have different possibilities, and we explain why we choose this one. Mostly we choose the ILO the definition and calculation method. So now, uh, so you, maybe you are interested in having a look at these uh, indicators, and that's the SAI website you will find if you go and have a look on our website. We can do it now uh, in an interactive way. That's the entry uh, page. Start now. And now you have possibility to choose four country. Uh, you can, your own um, comparison can be among four countries or you can combine countries and group of countries. If you um, open the group of country, you have here different choices, for example, Oh, sorry. For example, low-income countries, Africa, Europe, and above, we have hopefully the different EU groups. It's difficult here. I am not so used to do that. Maybe we can, yeah, like that. So you, you have here OECD countries, EU 28, EU 15, G8, developed countries, whatever you are looking for. Maybe we choose now the... EU 28 and um, for 12. What kind of country you are interested in? Next. Belgium, okay. Next, what else? Italy, okay, Italy. And Switzerland, okay, great. Yeah, actually, because we are actually in negotiation with the ILO, they have some difficulties to update the 2013 data. They promise to do it until July. We will see, and uh, we will do, and, and uh, as soon as we get those information, we will do that. Now you have three possibilities to get information. The spider web with this chart, the scoreboard, and the index over time. So the spider web basically shows you, you can... Uh, go here on one of uh, the dimension. You see here these dimensions, and then you get all the, the values all, uh, also. Um, so what we see is, we see quickly Switzerland is the yellow line. What we see is Switzerland is outside. The more you are outside, the better is the index value. If you are in the center, it's, it's, it's very bad. So Italy is red, that we know already. Um, they don't have really good index. You can also skip other countries so that you can analyze one country in more details. And you quickly see here that this youth unemployment rate, and these are the condi working condition indicators. Uh, Italy, we know it uh, from other studies. Uh, they do have uh, quite an issue. If we compare that now with Switzerland, you see the big difference is in youth unemployment rate much higher value, uh, the same with relaxed unemployment in Switzerland, almost everybody finds quickly a job, so there's not an issue, they are not discouraged. In Switzerland, we don't have the need rate, which was for me really a problem to realize that we don't have 12 indicators uh, in 2012. The, it, the reason is that our federal statistic office didn't calculate the need rate itself. It was done by Eurostat, but um, that's why ILO don't uh, use the, the official data. So actually we are f trying to convince our federal statistic office that they should deliver those data uh, to the ILO because they are available. So temporary work rate, you see Switzerland here, another issue where we just talked to uh, our Swiss people, we have here quite a high value. So the question is why Switzerland do have a high rate of uh, temporary worker? In my, my thesis, it has to do with the university uh, internships. Uh, almost every university graduate nowadays has to do at least one or two internships. And those internships are contracts um, below 18 months. Belgium. So who is interested in Belgium? Okay. 
So you see, um, yeah, compared maybe to Switzerland, um, of course, the unemployment rate is lower. You have also some discouraged uh, youngsters. Then the temporary worker rates are not that high as in Switzerland, but um, an issue is it is an issue. The same with the involuntary part time worker rate, and here in work at risk of poverty, it's quite high. So that's uh, certainly an issue. And the skills mismatch rate is also, the value is low, so that means there must be an issue in your country concerning the skills mismatch. So these uh, are um, those indicators and what you can do. And if you f think that you would like to use that for a presentation, you have the download uh, function, so you can use those data for your own presentation um, or for whatever you like to have that. Then the scoreboard. Um, shows you every details on the data. So you, we actually didn't know how to do, a, uh, how to use the wages. We, every dimension was waged. Uh, you see that here um, has 25%. But we need to do a factor analysis uh, before we know how to how to use the wages in in, um, in a concrete uh, and evidence-based way. But we mentioned, we, we let that open because maybe other researchers try to find out uh, how to use that. That's why do you have a function. You can set it uh, 0, 1, or 2, or 3 if you would like to find out something. Then you have the value of the indicator, the score, and the ranking of uh, those indicators. If now we have uh, European countries, um, but if you are, for example, having um, a developing country, maybe the, there you have a, um, a mark which says, so be careful, there are maybe only two indicators available, so you can't compare uh, those uh, four countries. The index over time is another very interesting, in my view, a very interesting um, result. You see here, for those four countries and for the EU28, this is EU28, the blue one, yellow one is Switzerland, um, the light uh, blue one is Belgium, and Italy is the red one. You have now a lot of information. First of all, the index over time. What happens, especially after the economic crisis in some countries? If we can show now Spain, Greece, Portugal, you see how the development was after 2007. But what we see also is here the number of indicators who are behind the index, because every country changed the policy from year to year, how many indicators they have. Therefore, uh, we deliver the information. You see in 91, uh, of course, every country has not that much indicators, and it goes up until 2012. Switzerland still is missing three indicators uh, out of 12. That's why um, we can't really compare Switzerland um, without having those three indicators together with the other countries. Or we know what kind of limitation an index has. So this is the other inf in uh, information. You see number of available indicators is on the other row. Now, a lot of problems we have in order to find out uh, why, for example, Swiss, what, what happened in Switzerland in this year. Uh, it is the skills mismatch indicator that brings this index down. And uh, we are trying to figure out now as well with the official Federal Statistical Office what, what happens there. Because if the skills mismatch indicator falls down from one year to the other and goes up the next year, something is is maybe wrong in the data set. And we know it now, and we will, um, it, with the next release, we can correct that. It's not that worse as it is here. And in other countries, of course, you can find, find out some other uh, aspects which are not that good. So these are basically the three information you have, and you can play with your own um, countries. You can also set uh, indicators uh, on zero, if you set that all on zero and you are interested only in one indicator, then you have the development over time for one of the indicators. So you can do your own analysis on the 12 indicator. Now the descriptive analysis uh, you can do, of course, with your um, web tool, with the web tool. I just uh, printed out some of the interesting comparison. For example, if we compare UK and Portugal, you have here the, use unem the unemployment rate, which is uh, higher in Portugal than in the UK. 
it's not a big surprise for us. Uh, and um, I learned from uh, Laura Antonelli that the uh, European Union sets policy uh, on that issue. So the Youth Unemployment Initiative supports EU member states if they have regions with youth unemployment rates over 25%. But if we are looking now at the index and the different indicators between the two countries, you see the youth labour market index in the year 2011 in the UK is lower than in Portugal. So that's now for us the interesting aspect to discuss. And of course, we can say, yeah, it depends on how you set the wages, the weights. Of course, but I think what you, what you get out of information from this scoreboard is it's not only about this quantity, single quantitative indicator unemployment rate, as you have it here. It's also maybe, for example, uh, the difference here is a big difference is formal education and training rate. It's higher in Portugal than in UK. Or the skills mismatch rate, which is quite lower in Portugal than in UK. Or another difference is here the relaxed unemployment rate, for example, or the need rate. So this indicator, this index helps you to figure out uh, where are differences between countries. At, but it's up to you to make an interpretation how important it is. Then Portugal, um, over the time, you see here Portugal is the red line. And they were, in 2000, they were quite high, higher than the EU, EU 28 score or higher than the United Kingdom. They fall down, but still they are better than U United Kingdom. So I think it's important to understand the development, but of course you need more research in order to find out why and what are the differences. Greece, Spain, Greece and Spain before and after the crisis, you see here the... Uh, the spider web and the, the index values, they are quite similar. They had here quite similar use and employment rate. Temporary worker is um, in Spain. Blue is Spain. Greece is yellow. Um, they have a big difference here uh, as well as in the skills mismatch and in the long-term uh, unemployment rate. If you compare them the year 2007 with 2012, you see what happens in those, in those country, countries. Red is Greece 12 and dark blue is Spain 12. So you see here they can figure out what kind of indicators are worse than before that. This index value as a whole was really one point is, is, is a lot. From down almost, almost one point, that's really a lot. The Nordic country, at the glance, normally um, people think that the Nordic country are quite good uh, and we, we, we treat them as a kind of homogeneous group, but it's not the case. If you are going and have a look at uh, those data, here uh, Sweden, Denmark is, uh, has the highest value, uh, followed by Finland and uh, the lowest is Sweden. So even the Nordic country have to go into the detail in order to analyze that. What we also did is we make a correlation between the index value and the youth unemployment rate so that you see how the correlation is. And for us, this, this picture shows it's worthwhile to go beyond the youth unemployment rate to describe the situation um, for young people. Now, I uh, sum up with an outlook. We will do the, hopefully, if we get the data from the ILO in summer 2015, with some improvements on the data set and with the year 2013. Then we make a sensitivity analysis um, in terms of the wage choices, if we can figure out what is the importance of weights in, in, in this regard. And then further developments of the indexes, uh, expand, expansion and improvement of the database in different countries. Um, analysis of indicator selection concerning developed and developing country. We are aware about the differences of youth unemployment in developing countries and developed countries. If we get a project uh, financed for developing countries, we try to 
uh, work with the labor force survey in order to find out how we can improve that and how, how we can explain why we should treat unemployment rate differently from developing countries to developed countries. Then uh, skills mismatch indicator is based on the ISCA classification. And of course, we know that this, this uh, classification, uh, they do have a lot of limitation, but we don't have any alternative actually. So we are working on that. What, what is maybe the next generation of skills mismatch measure, measurement? An analysis of the determinants of the situation of adolescents in the labor market, for example, this typology of education system on different education, lab, um, education levels and the labor market regulation. This will be our next uh, publications uh, which help to discuss uh, if the index is enough uh, explanation, uh, explanating for what we would like to find out or not. <laughs> 